Hi, and welcome. I'm the realtor, Evan, and I'm here to help you home sellers who are looking to sell your home right now for the best possible price in any market. And I'm going to do that by walking you through my proven system that I use time and time again to do just that. And I'm also going to give you three top insider secrets on how to go about selling your home for the best price at the very end. So stay tuned. Those tips might even work for the market that you're in, even if you're not in Los Angeles. You're here because you've probably been stressed up until now dealing with multiple or all of these situations, and you just don't know where to turn and how to get your home sold for the best price. First, you know that you need to maybe get some help and you've tried to hire a real estate agent that just left you feeling overpromised with no results. And you know that marketing your home effectively is crucial to your success, but you just don't feel it's been done right. Or maybe you found the experience of preparing your home for sale is time consuming and stressful, especially if you have to go through repairs or staging and renovations, or you felt hassled already about accommodating showings for buyers. Maybe you've tried to set the right price for your home, but it's been tricky because you want to set it for as much as possible, but don't want to turn off buyers, or you don't want to set it for too low because that might leave you feeling shortchanged. You could have also been stressed out waiting for the right buyer to provide you with the offer you've been looking for, particularly if you need to sell it quickly, or you've been dealing with lowball offers that have left you feeling undervalued and underappreciated. You realize also that the costs of selling your home can add up quickly, including closing costs, real estate commissions, and especially if you have to go through renovations, and the more it costs, the less profit you get. You might have also had uncertainty about the overall sales process, which can be overwhelming to most people, especially when you take into consideration market conditions, buyer financing situations, negotiations, and other unexpected issues that could have come up. If any of these have been situations that you've experienced or all of them, this is going to be the process that is going to be best and most useful for you going forward. So why is this different? What makes this process unique in getting your home sold quickly and for the most money possible in whatever market you're in? Well, first, let me introduce myself. I'm the realtor, Evan. I've been a full-time realtor with JMG Realty and I've been licensed in California since 2019, although I've been working in real estate since 2010. I've closed 50 plus transactions for over $40 million in volume in just these last three years alone during these unprecedented times. During those same years, I've also achieved President's Club and Top Producer Awards for my brokerage. Not only am I a realtor, but I'm an active real estate investor. I've personally invested in over 130 multifamily rental units since 2021. I have connections with many companies that can help tailor the sale of your home to your financial needs. And because I'm an active realtor and an active investor, I know exactly what buyers in this market are looking for and know exactly how to showcase your property for the fastest and highest sale. So here's the truth that I'm going to tell you. You can sell your home for top dollar even without an agent, but you need to know how to do it the right way. Most home sellers, generally don't have time to learn the ins and outs of the complicated marketing process for selling a home, as well as negotiating offers and shepherding the contracts to go through a successful closing. In fact, because of that lack of knowledge, reports have been shown that in even as last year in 2022, those for sale by owner homes typically sold for $120,000 less than the average home sold by an agent. In fact, because of that, the owner and founder of the website of ForSaleByOwner.com, Colby Sombrato, he didn't even do a for sale by owner. He used his own real estate agent. So again, you can do it without an agent. You just have to know how to go about doing it. And that's really the key here. And what I'm gonna walk you through today is the steps to selling your home and knowing exactly how to go about that process. 
So this core concept works. It does absolutely work. And if you're feeling frustrated or doubtful, it's not your fault. There's a lot of agents out there. There's over 3 million agents in the US alone. And there's a lot of information online from media outlets and other people, maybe friends and family have been giving you tips and insider information. It's normal to feel confused with all that's going on out there. But the truth is, again, you can sell your home for top dollar in this crazy market if and only if you use the right tools, the right strategies, and have the right partnerships. And my team of professionals from attorneys, repair companies, cleaners, photographers, they're all the best dedicated people to solving this problem and selling homes for home sellers just like you. This is why we were able to achieve such a spectacular result for Elizabeth, who sold her home for $20,000 over her desired price and just in time to close concurrently on our new purchase of a new home in a different state. We were able to coordinate the whole process for her. It wasn't so long ago. It was during these unprecedented times as well. She sold it here in Los Angeles. She moved out of state into her brand new home and she closed on the sale of her property here on the same exact day that she closed on the purchase of her property in Oregon. You can have the same results too if you follow this process, just like Nancy and David also, who sold their home for over asking without offering any concessions during this period of low demand at the beginning of this year. It was in incredibly low demand nobody was buying homes people were giving their homes away they were offering concessions they were reducing their prices nancy and david followed our process and by doing so they sold their home over asking and with no concessions whatsoever now most agents will just do simple steps in order to try to sell your home first they'll advertise themselves on social media they'll bang a yard sign into your lawn They'll maybe run an ad in the paper. They'll throw your listing up on the MLS. They'll encourage agents in their office to show it. Maybe they'll hold an open house or two. And when all else fails, they're just going to get on your, their knees and pray that it's going to sell. Now, I'm not saying we're not going to do some of these things like put up a sign in the yard, advertise and put it on the MLS but we're gonna take it to the next level. And this is the proven way. It's my method that always works every time. The first step is going to be evaluate your home and set a price. The second step is going to create a, a plan to prepare your home for sale without costing you a ton of money. The third step is gonna to be to market your home using social media and video and send out targeted ads to the most likely buyers. We're also gonna next show your home to qualified buyers and we're going to put contingency plans in place in case things are not going the way we had hoped for once we get the home shown to buyers we're going to receive and evaluate the offers that we receive and we're going to close the sale in the final step and so now i'm going to walk you through each of these steps so that you can understand how we're going to go about each individual one so first we evaluate and your home and set a price. In order to do this, there are various steps that we need to go through in order to get the right price for your home. We're gonna look at comparable sales. So we're gonna look at recent homes that have sold in your area and try to get a sense of what they are selling for. This is gonna tell us what the market is willing to pay for a home like yours. We're gonna to have to consider when looking at comparables, we have to consider factors such as location the size the condition interior condition exterior condition structurally and we want to compare the homes that have sold just within the last six months now what makes your home stand out from other comparable homes are there differences we have to, we have to look at things like parks that are nearby does your house have a nice view is it bigger has it been updated recently and alternatively, does it need to be updated? All of these factors need to be considered when evaluating your price and adjusting that price compared to the other homes that you're looking at, the comparable sales, to make sure you're setting the appropriate price. 
okay? Now we also need to consider some other factors, the time frame. How quickly do you wanna sell your home? That's important when you're setting a price. If you wanna sell your home faster, you might need to lower the price to make it even more attractive. We also have to recognize some emotional attachments. If this is a home that you've been living in for a while, or it's pretty much all of your, the money that you're gonna need to buy your next home, you might have some emotional attachments and we have to set those aside because at the end of the day, this is a business transaction and it's important to balance sentimental value with objective factors when setting your price. We can also use some tools to help you determine a price. You've probably seen Zillow's estimate tool and that is great for giving you a ballpark idea, but it is subjective and it is algorithmic. So it doesn't take into account tangible and intangible factors that we were just talking about, like time frame, condition, and other subjective aspects. So keep that in mind. Don't just take this estimate. You can also use an appraiser to help give you an idea of where your property should be valued. Now, an appraiser is going to cost you money about four to six hundred dollars just to get that appraisal and they may or may not be doing you justice when evaluating your comparable sales they might just pick the three nearest comparable sales and use that we need to go a little bit deeper when we're setting a price and that's why you can also get a free valuation from us on your current home simply by clicking the link on this page and we can do that valuation for free for you and help you set a price for your home. Now, who determines the listing price for your home? Great news. You determine the listing price for your home. You can set it at any price that you want, but you have to be realistic about the price of your sale. It's not necessarily a good thing to overprice your home, and it's certainly not necessarily a good thing to undervalue your home and set too low of a price. Do your due diligence, do evaluation, and set the proper price for your home based on local market conditions and comparable sales. Can you set a high price and leave room for negotiation? Again, you certainly can use this as a strategy, but you wanna make sure you do it correctly that it makes sense for the market that you're in. You don't wanna to set too high of a price because that can turn off buyers. And just on the counter side, you don't wanna to set too low of a price that you're giving things away, although that can attract a lot more buyers in that strategy. How quickly can you sell your home? Well, that does depend on a lot of factors such as the market, the price, the competition that's out there. Within this market that we're in, we're seeing homes get into contract within one to two weeks of being listed for sale. That doesn't mean you're gonna have the same results. Your home might sell faster or slower, depending on the situation and the market. But once you're in contract, it also will then take somewhere between 15 to 30, maybe even 45 days to close the sale of your home. And that is largely dependent on the type of financing that your buyer is using. The second step is preparing your home for sale. Now, once you have your price determined, we need to get your home ready to list it. You have to clean and declutter your house. This is the very first step. We wanna get everything out of the way and depersonalize everything about your home so that the buyers can see themselves living in your house. We need to make repairs and upgrades. Again, you wanna make sure that the buyer comes into the house and doesn't feel like they have a lot of work to do when they first move in. So this can be cosmetic fixes. It may even be structural fixes. The thing is that we wanna make sure that you're spending the right money in the right places and a professional will come in and help you figure out what to spend the money on to make your home sell for the best price. That's something I can certainly help you with, just like helping you figure out how to make your home stand out through curb appeal. Maybe it's painting the exterior of the home, maybe it's cutting the grass or trimming the bushes, but we wanna make sure that rolling up to the house the buyers look at the house and say, wow, this is a place I really want to live. Once they walk inside, we might also need to stage the home so that they can get a good understanding of how the home will look once they bring in their furniture. You might already have your furniture in there and we can avoid this step, but if you've already moved out and the house is empty, we may need to talk about staging your home so that you can help 
facilitate the sale for your buyers. Most importantly, when we're getting the home ready for sale, we want to take great photos of the house so that we can display them online and in ads. And usually we want to use a photographer to do this so that they're high quality pictures and they look amazing online and on flyers. Now, do you really need to take high quality photos of your home? Yes. In fact, photos are usually the first step of getting people interested in coming to see your home. If you're not taking high quality photos, you are likely going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. So we definitely need to spend that money. Do you need to make repairs on your home? Well, it, again, it depends. And it's something that I or another agent or professional can come in and help you determine exactly what repairs need to be made. Some repairs are going to create more value for your home and some repairs are not going to create any value at all but rather just retain the value you're hoping to achieve at the price you're trying to sell it at and can you get the money back on the renovations that you've made again it's very similar to the repairs if you're making renovations to add bathrooms or to re upgrade the kitchen or redo the bathrooms Yes, you might be able to get the money back that you spent on those renovations in even more if you've upgraded to a nice quality. But it all depends on how you've positioned the home. And if you've done renovations in just structurally or behind the scenes that buyers are not gonna see as part of the value, it might be tougher to recoup the cost spent on those renovations. So definitely speak with a professional, give me a call and I'll help to walk you through those steps. The third step is marketing your home. First of all, we want to create some sense of urgency and sense of demand. So it's usually best to list right before the weekend comes around. This will give us time for buyers to really want to come and see this home right away on the weekend when they have free time. We're going to want to take those high quality photos and videos so it's we can position your house to be the best looking house in the market right there above all the other competition. We're going to write a compelling listing description so that we can explain to the buyers even before they see it how amazing your home is and it should be concise but informative highlighting the unique features and benefits of your home. We also want to advertise on multiple platforms and use video if we can in order to list your home on traditional real estate websites and also social media. So if you're doing it by yourself, you might be able to list it on Zillow. You won't be able to do it on the MLS, but we can list your property on multiple platform platforms online and offline to help get a lot more eyeballs on the property and attract a lot more potential buyers. So one question we often get at this point is if you can just list your home for sale online and find a buyer that way. And yes, you can go online, list your home on Zillow for sale by owner, maybe some other sites and definitely find some buyers. I will, however, say that in this particular area, having an agent by your side can definitely help you find the right qualified buyers because without the agent, you're not going to have access to their network, to their office resources and you cannot list your home on the MLS, which is going to give you a lot more attention than just having your home listed on Zillow by itself. Next step is you wanna show your home. And once your home is on the market, you need to be ready to show it to potential buyers. The first week or two are the most critical in getting your home out there. If the longer your home sits on the market, the less attractive it is to potential buyers. So we wanna make your home as open as possible and accommodate as many showings as possible. It's best if you aren't present also during these showings, buyers are gonna feel a lot more comfortable walking through your house without you there and feeling like you're looking over their shoulder. Just think of it yourself. Would you be more comfortable going through somebody else's closet with them behind you, wondering what you're looking at or how you're judging their, their situation, their living situation and their lifestyle? It's always better if you are not there and have somebody else doing the showing for you. You also want to make sure to prepare your pets for the showings. If you have pets, it's best to either take them out of the house for the showings or maybe put them in a cage 
or have them off to the side and get rid of any odors that may be lingering. It's very important because some people are not going to be comfortable around pets or may even be allergic. You wanna definitely keep track of the showings that you have. Some of our MLS lock boxes are programmed with time restrictions and we can be notified when somebody takes the keys or who that person is. If you're doing your own showings and using your own lock boxes to allow people to come in when you're not there, make sure that you're only giving out combinations to the lock boxes to licensed professionals or consider very carefully who exactly you are giving the combination to and it's not just some stranger. You also wanna make sure when you do have the showings that you're following up and getting feedback. Feedback's important because it allows you to understand how you can pivot and make your home more presentable next time so that the next buyer sees it even better and potentially makes that offer. It might be easier for you to get feedback through an agent also because some people have hard time telling the truth of the situation to the seller themselves. So when you list your home and you have things inside your home, when people go to see your home, a lot of the times people wonder, how do I include or exclude things from the sale? And it's very simple. Anything you wanna stay in the home when you leave, you can include in the sale in the contract and anything you wanna exclude, you can also exclude in the contract. Typically, you are gonna see appliances in the kitchen that are gonna be left with the sale, like a refrigerator, stove. You'll also see the dishwasher, microwave, even the washer and dryers stay with the home. Everything else is typically considered personal property and will automatically be excluded from the sale. But if you wanna specify, you can specify that in the contract. We also get questions of how do you handle the buyer's questions? Well, you want to be very direct and transparent with the buyer. If you're showing the home yourself, you want to be careful about pre-negotiating anything before you have a written offer, but you want to make sure to address any buyer's questions truthfully and honestly, and be direct when you are answering these questions. And if you're using an agent, make sure you tell the agent everything that they need to know about selling your home so that you're on the same page when they're talking to the potential buyers themselves. Step number five is to receive and evaluate the offers because now that you've shown your home, you're going to want to start getting the offers so you can sell your house. You want to make sure that the buyer is qualified. First and foremost, you will look for their pre-qualification letter or a pre-approval letter and a bank statement that's not more than 30 days old. You can even go and talk to their lender to make sure that they are qualified and get it directly from the lender's mouth so that you can have any questions about their pre-approval addressed on the phone with their lender. But if they're not financially sound, we don't even wanna consider those offers. We wanna evaluate the offers by purchase price and the terms that they're writing on. Which one gives you the greatest net profit and which one has the fewest contingencies and the best chance at closing quickly and easily? You wanna look at the timeline of each offer. Does it suit your needs? Are they gonna close quickly? Do you need more time? Maybe you wanna close later or sooner. Is the buyer flexible in those terms? You can consider the type of financing that they're using as well as a term. Cash is usually easier and it can usually close sooner, but often extends a lower offer. Cash buyers are usually trying to use that cash offer in order to get it for a lower price. However, if you have multiple offers, you can position the cash offers against financed offers to help drive that price up. And if you're looking at financed offers, what type of loan are they using? How much of a down payment are they gonna be offering? How long is it gonna take them to clear their loan contingency? All of these questions should be addressed in the offer and you should be, re be reviewing them when you are considering those offers. Consider the other sale contingencies. What contingencies are they leaving in place? Uh, do they need a home inspection? Do they have to sell another property first? Are they using a financing contingency or an appraisal contingency? The fewer contingencies you have in the offers presented to you are going to be better for you and your sale. And also when it comes to the due diligence contingency, because this is the period where the buyer can back out 
and still get their earnest money back with no risk to them whatsoever, the shorter their due diligence period, the better and for you and the less opportunity there is for the buyer to back out of the deal or for the deal to go south. Once you've received all of these offers and you've evaluated them, you might wanna go back and counter some of these offers to make the terms a little bit more in your favor. You have the option to do that. Talking with an agent to help you decide what terms to counter and how to write up those counter offers is a good start, but you can do these things on your own as well. You just need to know how to do it properly and not to offend the buyers so that they walk away from the deal. So make sure when you're countering, you're doing it correctly and you're making your terms stronger, potentially even getting the price to go up. And once you get the offer accepted, the next step is to close the sale. Once you have that accepted offer, generally it takes about 30 days to close the sale for a financed offer. Cash will usually take a little less time than a financed offer and new constructions and short sales may take a little bit longer. You wanna work with your title and escrow companies so that you can trust them to handle your side of the documents. You wanna keep in contact with the lender on the buyer's side so that you know what the updates are when it comes to them approving the loan. You also wanna make sure to clear two contingencies as soon as possible. First and foremost are the repairs. Make sure that they do their home inspection and that they submit their request for repairs or request for credits and you get that out of the way so that you can clear that contingency off the bat. And then also you want to make sure that the appraisal contingency is cleared and out of the way as well. These two factors can either break the sale or potentially reduce the net profit that you're going to get. So it's very important that you focus on these two factors right away once you're in escrow. And once those contingencies and all contingencies are cleared, the next step is to make sure the lender is on top of getting the loan done and getting that clear to close status. Then it's on to the walkthrough and getting the sale done. Now here are your top three insider secrets that I promised you for selling a home in LA and really they're useful anywhere in the country that you're looking to sell your home. Number one, buyers don't buy the best home on the market. They buy the best presented home that is at the best price. So keep that in mind when you are doing your pricing strategies as well as preparing your home for sale. Number two, buyers don't compare against data. They compare against what they see. They're looking at your competition. So make sure your price and your staging and your presentation stacks up well compared to the other homes that are being offered in the same market, in the same area for the same price range. And number three, the three key things that make a difference for selling your home in the top market are the three P's. Presentation, make sure your home is presented well. Prospect, you have to get your home in front of qualified people to buy your home. And price, make sure that your pricing strategy is on point, that you're not overpricing it or underpricing it. One thing I also get as a lot of holdup from sellers is where am I gonna go next? So final considerations when selling a home, I wanna end off with this note is number one, don't let the market determine your own personal needs and wants. There is never a perfect time for anything. This is may not be the perfect time of the market, but it may be the right time for you. And that's the most important thing. And we can always make that work. Number two, interest rates and prices work hand in hand. So if you're waiting for interest rates to drop in order to be able to buy a home, then the prices are gonna go up when you're looking to purchase a home. That may be better when you're selling, but it's not gonna necessarily be easier when you're buying. Look for the right time for you when you're selling your home. Don't worry about the interest rates and the prices. If you can find the home that's right for you, then it might also be the right time for you to sell your home. Number three, you can sell your home on contingency of finding a replacement property. So maybe you're not sure if you're gonna be able to find the right home. You can get into contract with a buyer with a contingency in place that you're not gonna actually sell your home unless you find another home for you to move into. Now that may not be appealing to, so, to a lot of buyers 
and you might be reducing your buyer pool by doing that, but it does give you an opportunity to start looking to see if you can get a buyer into contract, as well as give you the opportunity to start looking to buy a replacement home. Number four, if you have enough equity built up, you can use the equity of your current home to keep the payments of your new home at about the same amount that you're currently paying. This is largely dependent on your own personal situation, but it is a possibility to use the equity as a down payment on a new bigger home or maybe a new smaller home so that you can keep the payments exactly the same of where you are, sell your home, maybe pocket some money, but also get into the new situation that you wanna get into. Number five, with my market knowledge and my proven buying process as well, I can help you in the pursuit of your new home. In fact, I have another video and another course just like this that will take you through my proven methods of buying a home and that can help you do that on your own or with my help and get a great deal on buying a new home. So now that we've gotten to this point, you have one option to try and sell the home yourself. We might consider this the hard way because you've probably never done it before. The problems with selling your home yourself, I'll be honest, is limited exposure. You're not going to get as many qualified buyers into your house because you're not going to have as many channels to market your property. You might have some pricing challenges in determining what the best price is for your home and positioning it that way strategically in front of buyers. You might have some legal and contractual issues because you've never navigated through a contractual process of selling your home and negotiating with buyers. There's a lot more time and effort, first of all, to ramp up on all the things that you need to know about selling your house, as well as getting the house sold and positioned properly for a nice presentation of a sale. And lastly, if you're doing this alone, you're probably gonna have some emotional attachment either way, but you're gonna have nobody to bounce ideas off of and help you to make objective decisions for your sale. So again, you can do this, take all the steps I've just walked you through. This is the proven method to sell your home yourself. It is a little bit harder to do it yourself. Or option number two, you can allow me to work for you. You get the best expert advice, you get access to my preferred partners and concierge services, and you will be part of our VIP home sellers program that will cater to you through all of this process and help you sell your home fast and for the best price possible. So we've talked about the disadvantages of doing it on your own. Here are the benefits of listing with me. You get full service listing and seller representation. From pre-listing to closing, the details are handled, making it as stress-free for you as possible. There are no upfront fees. I get paid once we sell the home. That's it. It's an easy exit listing. If for some reason you're not completely satisfied and an offer has not been accepted on the property, you have a right to cancel this listing. No penalty whatsoever. There's a communication guarantee. One of the biggest complaints that I hear from sellers is that they never hear from their agent. So I promise to contact you weekly with any updates and feedback about your home. I also have concierge services that offers a free seller's home warranty coverage during your listing period. This is great, especially when you're showing your home to random people. This will cover you for any damages. And if repairs are needed prior to listing or prior to selling, I will provide you with an opportunity to pay for the repairs at closing. So you don't even have to come up with that money out of pocket up front. Plus, as I mentioned, you have access to my referral network of professionals, whether it's title and escrow companies, attorneys, even lenders, should you need help to find a new home, if we need to get an appraiser, anything that you need, I will help you find those resources through my preferred network. Simply to get started, here's what you do. Click on the link below, book a call. All it takes is one call. We can start talking about your needs and start helping you get through this selling process to figure out if this is the right time for you and how to best go about selling your home. I just wanna caution you that I can only take on five new clients a month. And the reason is, is I wanna treat every single one of my clients like they're my only client. And if I have too many clients, 
I can't do that and I can't treat you fairly. So I just encourage you to sign up as soon as possible so that we have enough slots left for you this month when you're ready. So click the link below and book a call today to get started on this super simple process for selling your home and having the expert guidance that you need to help you do it the right way. I hope this was helpful and I hope to talk to you soon. Best of luck in selling your home. I'm the Realtor Evan and I hope you have a great day.